So yeah, uh, started doing the setup of the graveyard for the front yard. Uh, as it is, all I have right now are the the headstones and the big stuff being placed. Um, you know, we got the arch. Uh, it's not fully dressed yet. <laughs> that guy has given me so many problems. Um, had some issues putting all of them in. The ground here is something else. So these are pretty much all installed with sections of rebar. Uh, the normal garden stakes that I would normally put in don't, just don't go in. This ground is so hard. Uh, it seems like underneath here there's a layer of crushed rock. I don't know if that's all over the yard but it's definitely in places. And like here, I just used some spikes to nail them in. It was pretty windy when we were trying to set this up yesterday, or Saturday, no, it was yesterday. Um, added a couple, and I didn't on that one. So a couple of these are pretty good just by themselves. Uh, they're weighted pretty well. I like that one's got rebar in it. Uh, I've got rebar just backing this one up, and it's also got some nails holding it in the ground. Nails here, you know, rebar there. This one has seen better days. It's quite old. Um, needs a new paint job, but I think what I'm going to do is glue some moss on it, because I have a whole bunch of moss that would probably look really good on that. Mr. Beaky here. I've uh, seen better days. He had a, a little broken arm accident. Uh, the piece that's inside here that uh, does the arm movement, I can find it in here. Yeah, it, uh, it fell over and broke off last time I used it. So what I did is I ended up putting a piece of, I cut a piece of wood and put it on there with uh, some JB Weld and it held pretty good until this year when it again fell over. So I have that piece of wood glued together again and I try and glue it back on so that it will hold the arm in place. And of course the happy this year, the uh, the plague doctor from Home Depot. This is one of the coolest animatronics I think they've had. It doesn't actually do a lot like the head doesn't move, which I, for some reason I thought it did. Uh, but this arm moves up and down and this one, you know, it's like pushes out and does some other animations, things like that. It, it's actually kind of nice. It's got some nice things that it does. Got a couple of these cool little light up pumpkins. I've got, of course, the whole pumpkin patch in there. You know, a few other things that need to go around. Uh, the electricity is all coming from the garage. I still need to fix, figure out how to get the whole thing wired so that I've got power. Uh, but I'm, I'm putting a timer on so that it's only on when, when I want it to be. So it'll only be on at night. Uh, lights. I got lights. A lot of lights. Some more over here. And I've got some in the garage, and then I got these uh, little flicker flame lanterns that are actually kind of cool. Uh, got some flame bulbs. I don't know if I'm going to have time to set them up, but uh, that's kind of the next thing on the project list is to put up lighting and make sure that it's all operating and looking really cool. I am not planning on doing that tonight because it is freaking cold today. It's like 45 degrees. And now it's cooling down. Uh, but I do have another thing that I want to try and do. Uh, got a new grill. Uh, dogs! The dogs have been bored for a while because I've been working. Uh, so this is kind of the first time I've been able to come up for air today. Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to try and put the grill together tonight because I think that will be relatively quick. Uh, the lighting is going to take some 
more concentrated effort because I still don't know what all I want to do yet. Um, I really should try and get all the lights together in one place to find out exactly what I have for inventory. But I have enough. All right, quick update. This is uh, day two or three, I suppose. Um, I have some lighting set up. I don't have it aimed quite well. Um, mostly because I set them up when it was light. It's starting to get dark enough that uh, I can get it going. But, you know, I've got some lights over. I've got some lights on the trees. I'm going to give them a little highlight. Um, I've got three lights on this one. I've got one in the front lighting Mr. Skelly, and then two in the back that are providing some light on the underside of the arch. Uh, this fell over earlier, that top piece broke off, so I need to fix that, uh, but that's pretty easy. A whole bunch of lighting I need to do with these, but that's all low voltage. I was able to uh, use this uh, expansion joint, or, you know, between the things and just stuck it out and was able to put the cord through there and I've got the electrics in here that's my 12 volt power supply and that runs out to a couple of distribution centers I have one that's over here where I'll be able to hook up individual 12 volt lights and the other one is over here so I've got two zones so this one will light, you know, this group and then that one will end up lighting the rest of that group. And I'm pretty sure that will cover it. Oh yeah, I need to put up the lanterns. Um, this is the topper for the arch and it got knocked over and it tore this uh, plastic mount out. It's only held in by these little tiny screws and they're not really screwed into the plastic they're sort of screwed alongside the plastic. So I got some uh, some of this uh, E6000, which is a really good adhesive, as it turns out. Um, glued that on, and now it's set, so I'm gonna be popping that back on. Also going to be making some changes to this, all these areas that have the bare styrofoam, I'm gonna put some moss on. Uh, so I'll be doing that when it's dark, because it's much easier to do it in the dark where I can see it in here and try to take the time when it's still light enough outside to do outside stuff. I think that turned out okay. Yeah, had a little bit in that crack. Yeah, I think that'll do. I'm also going to be making some changes to the DC system. Uh, the bare wire ends are going away and I'm going to use some ferrules to crimp on there. So that will make it easier. Uh, I may be, I think I'm going to be getting rid of these um, little distribution things because like you can see those those small those little tiny um, connectors there this wire doesn't go well into them I'll see what it does with the feral crimper but uh, I'm not hoping for anything really major and I should probably uh, <laughs> get rid of some of the paper accessories that this came with all right Now I got this crimping tool on Amazon. Um, I've had one before, but it was lost in the fire. And what's really nice about this is it's a uh, it is a hex crimper. So when you put the ferrule in with the wire inside and you crank it down, it closes down upon the wire and makes a really nice solid connection. Now this one also comes with a handy wire stripping and cutting tool, uh, which comes in handy when you're doing these ferrules. Now this inner tray does lift out and you have your selection of ferrules down here. So now we want to try and find the right one.
and uh, as you can see we found the right size here are the blue ones uh, this is I believe 16 gauge wire might be 18 but uh, these fit I'll just put it inside there and crank it down And what we're left with are these nice ends that go well into terminal blocks. They're nice and uh, nice and tight against there so you don't have any connection problems and no fraying. Unfortunately, these are too big to fit in here. So these are getting uh, replaced this year by these Wago connectors. Uh, well, at least I thought they were. Are they? Are they going to go in there? Huh. Apparently not. Alright, plan B. Alright, what I did is I put the ends with the ferrules in on the power supply. That gives them good meat to go to. I left these ends stripped and then they go into the Wago connectors just fine. You can see I also marked them with some red and black tape to keep the negatives and positives aligned. And these are now out of the picture. Now I was able to drill a hole. I got a uh, sacrificial auger bit and get these in. I've got the one down on the other side down there. Uh, both of these are in solid enough so they're not going anywhere and they can just get power run to them. Um, yeah. Now the Wagos only give me, what is it, three extra? Oh uh, no, four. Four extras that I can branch from. Of course I can daisy chain them so I can, you know, take one of these, get three plus a daisy chain and get a total of seven. So, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a kludge, but it'll work for now. I was also able to repair this guy. Um, I got the, you know, this wood block glued back, glued back on, but it did, uh, it did dip a little. So, you know, he's a little asymmetrical, but, you know, honestly, <laughs> it's still creepy. We can turn him on here. There we go. Yeah, he's he's not uh, doing too well. <laughs> yes, speaking of the crows. So I have to say that I'm really liking the Wago connectors. They're really easy to use, and so far they've been grabbing onto even the small wires. Uh, this may become the new normal for the haunt wiring. I'm reusing a lot of the stuff from the last few years, which is good. I mean, as far as the wiring and uh, the, you know, props, of course. Uh, but as I'm doing this, it's like each time I learn a little bit more so I can get better at it. and. Uh, I'm starting to learn things that I can do that will make it easier to set up next time. So, uh, that's doing it for this week. There's going to be more next week, but, uh, I, you know, this is, I'm doing this Friday night, so <laughs> it, it goes out tomorrow. Um, I'll have more in the books, so see you guys later.